If you haven't already checked out part one of this ninth 2018 NFL Draft Q&A, well, after this one, make sure you go check it out. But welcome to part two of the weekly NFL Draft Q&A. Got a bunch of questions here, so I'm going to go ahead and fire through them. Quarterback Film Room asks, your guy instinct. Is it my guy instinct or my gut instinct? Hmm. We'll go with gut instinct. But if you ask for guy instinct, we'll just pretend they're one in the same. Is Baker Mayfield the next Colt McCoy or the next Russell Wilson? That's a good question. There are elements of both in Baker Mayfield. To me, I kind of go in the middle and I'm like, what's his ceiling? And I say Jeff Garcia. And I don't think Jeff Garcia was a bad NFL quarterback. If I remember correctly, Jeff Garcia had some nice seasons, went to the Pro Bowl a couple of times. Not a Hall of Famer, not a superstar, but you could win games with Jeff Garcia. He was a productive player during his time. Um, but I don't think he's all the way at Colt McCoy scale, but I don't think he has it like Russell Wilson had it. And I was wrong about Russell Wilson coming back in 2012. So, um, somewhere in the middle. Like I said, maybe a Jeff Garcia. Morton Karsten asked, If you don't finish your scouting reports, will you release your big board and overall prospect rankings by position? Yes. Um, I don't know how many total scouting reports I will end up with based off the way things are off. Like, it's funny because... I took vacation from work this whole week, so I'll be doing a lot of watching, a lot of studying, and a lot of uploading of scouting reports. I would envision the total count of actual videos before the draft might be 100 to 125 of them, with the understanding that I might even do more of them once the draft is over, as people are looking for scouting reports of what they should expect out of players their team chose. Um, so just know that. But yes, I will release some type of big board even if I don't release 200, 250 scouting reports, there will be players that I watch that I won't upload videos for. Um, so yes, those will probably come in the last day or two before the draft, I would anticipate. Uh, Offseason asks, other than Josh Rosen, who is the most overrated prospect in this draft? Most overrated prospect in this draft. I think Baker Mayfield to a small degree, um, because I think the people that really love Baker Mayfield and talking about him being QB one in this draft, talking about he should go number one overall are overlooking the fact he is a six foot quarterback and there aren't a ton of those that are successful in the national football league. Sure. You have the outliers like Drew Brees and the under six foot crowd like a Russell Wilson, but generally your starting quarterback needs to be six foot two or taller. I mean, I don't make the rules. Those are just the rules of the modern NFL. Um, also taking into account that the guy played in a very pass happy uh, system at Oklahoma, very friendly to the quarterback should be a concern as well as quarterbacks that tend to have issues and questions about intangibles and their off the field behavior. Don't always tend to figure those out come the NFL level. Like you look most recently at a guy like a Jameis Winston, a Johnny Manziel, you know, people knew that Manziel was a knucklehead but thought, oh, he loved it in winter. You know, he was just a knucklehead. And Jameis Winston, while he hasn't busted out of the league, he's still getting into trouble off the field. Like, that doesn't go away. So, to me, there's some concern there. But to me, Mayfield is not nearly as massively overrated as Rosen is. As far as other guys in this draft class that are overrated, I've always felt Arden Key was overrated, and I stand by that. Um... I think Minka Fitzpatrick is overrated slightly only in the sense of maybe his draft positioning. Like a lot of people have had him in the top five. I talk about him as a top five player when the reality is I think he's more likely to be picked at pick 15 than he is at pick five. Um, who else? Uh, Connor Williams from Texas. I don't see where people are talking about him as a top 10 pick after actually having studied him and watched him. Uh, so maybe those are some of the guys that stand up. But I don't think anybody stands out to me this year as much as Josh Rosen does. Oski Land. What pass rushers will be available at pick 25? Uh, probably the most notable one for you, if you're a Titans fan, is going to be a guy like Arden Key. Is going to be a guy like Lorenzo Carter from Georgia. If you're talking about edge rushers, those would be the guys. Potentially, if you're talking about a D lineman, somebody like a Maurice Hurst from Michigan. But you have to worry about whether or not he would actually fit your system. Uh, Lucas Vandermeide. If this draft goes well for the Bears, 
will this mean that Ryan Pace goes down as the most competent general manager in this organization's history for a long time? Uh, at some point in time, the results have to matter. And as much as we can knock on a Jerry Angelo and talk about Ayatollah Angelo and some of the dumb stuff he did, Jay Cutler trade and many other things and all the draft failures that he had, we cannot change the fact that he did ultimately build the team that won a couple of division titles and made it to a Super Bowl. So, you know, was Angelo really good? No. Did he still find a way, sometimes I think even in spite of himself, uh, to build a team that went to the Super Bowl? Yeah. So until Pace goes there, he's not in Angelo's class. He's not in Angelo's league. It's just the way it is. Sometimes the results matter. Uh, Mark Whalen. Why do all these draft experts have me wanting to cry because they have the Dolphins taking Baker Mayfield? Oh, buckle up, baby. Draft night's going to be real interesting for you. Um, because Tannehill's coming off of a torn ACL. Tannehill has a big contract. Uh, by taking a guy like Baker Mayfield, it might allow them to move on. Also, you got to look at it from Adam Gase's standpoint, the general manager down there, his standpoint. They didn't draft Ryan Tannehill, so how long are you going to tie yourself to a quarterback from a previously failed regime? So there's smoke there, and there's legitimate smoke there for a reason. Good luck to you on Thursday, April 26th is all i got to say, Mark. <laughs> RG3 GOAT. Oh, good God. RG knee question. No. Uh, which players would be a nice fit for Green Bay at 14 and Baltimore at 16? Green Bay at 14, Harold Landry just seems to be their type of guy. Calvin Ridley, uh, because now you don't have Jordy Nelson. Randall Cobb's not the youngest. Yes, you've got Devontae Adams, but you could use more wide receiver. So Harold Landry, Calvin Ridley. If he was there, Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Mike McGlinchey, the tackle from Notre Dame. Because I think if you put him on the right side with Bakhtiari on the left side, it would allow you to move on from Balaga's deal. And McGlinchey could be a Jack Conklin type of right tackle for you, which would be a pretty good thing at the right tackle position. So those would be the guys that stand out to me. Uh, as far as Baltimore at 16, I look at either Will Hernandez or Isaiah Wynn. Uh, both of those offensive linemen to me would make a world of sense for the Ravens. I still think Calvin Ridley would make a lot of sense for them. Uh, potentially Cortland Sutton, although I think Calvin Ridley is more up their alley. Um, if Roquan Smith fell there at 16, it would be interesting to see if they would roll the dice on him. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, maybe somebody like Adarius Geis, although 16 might be a bit rich for their blood on him. Those would be some of the guys that I could think of that would make sense there. Uh, Joseph Humphrey. Does Shaquem Griffin seem like a future WWE prospect? They've had a guy with one leg, Zach Gowan, so why not have a guy with one hand? This company, especially in recent months and years, loves to tout first ever history making and all of this. Well, here comes Shaquem Griffin with one hand. And at six foot, almost 230 pounds, he's a monster amongst some of the midgets in that company today. So why not? Why not? Spencer Carpin. Should the Chargers take Lamar Jackson at 17? If he's at the top of their draft board, based off the way things play out, they have to consider it. Do I think they ultimately do it? No. Do I ultimately think they should? No. But if, if he's there at 17 and he's near the top of their draft board, I think they at least have to think about it and at least need to consider it. But I think Philip Rivers has more gas in his tank than, let's say, an Eli Manning does in New York. Or, based off of the way he's been acting, Big Ben in Pittsburgh, because he might play for who knows how much longer. He's kind of getting farvish. I quit. I'm back. I might quit. I might back. I might quit. I might back. You know, so, um, we'll see. But, no, I don't think so. Uh, Connor Measle. Would Leighton Vander Esch or Rashad Evans be the better linebacker for the Steelers at 28? Van Der Esch. Van Der Esch. And he's not going to be there. So then it becomes Rashawn Evans. Uh, DJ Manning 0801. Should the Bills take best player available at 12 and Mason Rudolph at 22? I am curious again as to where all this 
round one Mason Rudolph talk is coming from because to me it is just insane. I don't know how this happens. I don't know what's making it happen, but it needs to stop. Uh, but it's a fair question for you to ask. Um, best player available at 12, Rudolph at 22? No. This draft is all about getting the right quarterback for them. You didn't trade up to 12, just take best player available. You got to move up again and you got to get your guy at the quarterback position. That means you got to part with 12 and 22, so freaking be it. You got to get that guy. Since they didn't take Mahomes last year, since they didn't take Watson last year, now they got to sit there and pay a big price to get the quarterback this go round. Carter Webster, if the Giants took a quarterback, who do you think is the best fit? Sam Darnold. Although there is a part of me that from a stylistic standpoint thinks Josh Rosen is an equivalent fix because there are things about his game that remind me quite a bit of Eli Manning. But overall, the guy that just jumps out as the most logical choice would be Sam Darnold. Um, be no sports. Your favorite offensive prospect who will be available on day three. Favorite offensive prospect that will be available on day three. Um... That is a really good question. Who could I think of? I'm thinking, I'm sorry. Maybe somebody like a Dylan Cantrell from Texas Tech, the wide receiver. Um, maybe like an Antonio Callaway from Florida, because, yeah, he's got massive off-the-field concerns, but that massive talent is there. Um, and at that point in time, I'm not trying to find choir boys. I'm trying to find guys that can massively outplay their draft position. So maybe guys like that. I think of Martez Carter from Grambling State. Getting some, he's got some similarities to me to Tariq Cohen. Um, it runs very similarly. Just a lot of similarities there. So there would be some guys right there that I think of that could be available on day three. In terms of like favorite offensive prospects. Uh, Jess asks, how realistic is it that Minka Fitzpatrick may fall to pick 13? I think it's really realistic. Especially if you've got quarterbacks going one, two, three. Especially if you've got four quarterbacks going in the top 10 or four quarterbacks going in the top five, that means other players are going to drop. And let's just say, for example, you've got quarterback one, two, three, Saquon Barkley four, quarterback five. Let's just say, now all of a sudden at pick six, you got Bradley Chubb, Quentin Nelson, Denzel Ward, Derwin James, Harold Landry. There, there's a definite chance that a guy like him could drop to 13. Not so much just as a byproduct of how teams feel about him, but just because of the way the draft plays out. Like last year's draft had that huge run of wide receivers with Davis going five, Williams going seven, Ross going nine. That means guys like Jonathan Allen and Malik Hooker fall farther than they maybe should have. So it's very possible. Scott Ford, who is a better future NFL tight end, O.J. Howard or Hayden Hurst? I will slightly lean towards O.J. Howard just because O.J. Howard is younger and has a longer potential NFL career ahead of him. Um, Mr. Texas, would it shock you if the Jets did not select a quarterback? Nothing that dumb organization did would surprise me. But it would really shock me this go around if they moved up to pick three and didn't end up taking a quarterback. Even if they got themselves in a position to not end up with the quarterback they really wanted. Elusive Tiger, will Antonio Callaway who is a round one talent, fall to day three like Tyreek Hill because of off-field concerns? I think so. Although there is a chance that he could slide into round three, especially in the middle of the late portion or even when he gets into the compensatory picks, because teams are going to look at and see Tyreek Hill, although Callaway's not that level of explosive athlete. He's still a really good athlete, and he's got first-round, second-round type of skills. Teams are going to look at him and be like, okay, how comfortable are we with uh, – with having a credit card fraud guy. How comfortable are we with this guy who didn't really play last year? Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if he got into late day two, but early to mid day three for sure. Uh, Drake Maddox, 28. Guys you'd bang for the day table for at offensive tackle, pass rusher, quarterback, and defensive back. Um, haven't finished grading enough defensive backs yet to be able to say I'd pound the table for them. Pass rusher, I'll go Lorenzo Carter. Quarterback, I will go Lamar Jackson, even more so than Josh Allen. I know Josh Allen's my number one rated quarterback, but the guy I'd pound the table for the most is Lamar Jackson. Offensive tackle, I would probably right now go with Okorafor from Western Michigan, but I'd be more like smacking the table very lightly, if I'm being real. 
a Harbaugh we trust. Why aren't you higher on Maurice Hurst is, and aside from his heart condition? I didn't even know that I released my scouting report on him. I didn't even know that I gave my final grade on him yet. What, what, what makes you think that I'm not high on Maurice Hurst or am high on him? Or How would you even know? Maybe based off of a tweet or two? That doesn't necessarily tell you the full story. Now, that said, do I think it's completely and totally insane that Pro Football Focus supposedly, I believe they did actually, great gave him the highest interior lineman grade in their history? Yes. I do not see that. I do not see anything close to that. But even let's say if I come out and say Maurice Hurst is a second round pick, that doesn't mean that I'm saying he's a bad player, or even if he's a third round talent. But so far, based off of what I watched, without spoiling everything, I do not think he's a top 10 talent, no. And I stand behind that. Heart condition removed, because that's since been cleared anyways. And I think he said it was an irregular EKG, which can happen. A Vols fan. Should the Colts trade back into the end of the first round or stay with their second round picks? Depends on the board. Depends how it plays out. Uh, depends on who they would be targeting. Um, but I wouldn't be opposed to them moving back up into the tail end portion of round one. I mean, you've got three total second round picks, two of them back to back. Yeah, having three second round picks is great, but you can get yourself up a little bit. And I have to give up a bunch more to do so. That seems to be a good strategy. That way you would end up with two picks in the first round and two picks in the second round. That'd be a really good haul for Chris Ballard and the Colts this draft time. JT Evans uh, asks us, chance, ask us like there's multiple of me. Chances of Minka Fitzpatrick or Denzel Ward falling to pick 11. I think the chances of Minka Fitzpatrick dropping to 11 are m much greater than Denzel Ward. I think Denzel Ward goes top 10 to somebody. I really do. Fitzpatrick, though, his draft range might be more around 11 to 14 or 15, maybe 16 spot. and eh, Probably more 11 to 14. Um, but I think Ward goes ahead of him, and I think Ward goes in the top 10. That's what I think, anyways. So, anyways, thanks to you guys that tweeted your questions for this part of the NFL Draft Q&A this week, or part one. I enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed it, too. Hope you enjoyed the answers you got with the questions that you asked. Anyway, stay tuned to this channel. you got a lot more draft-related content coming up over the next couple of weeks. So sit down, buckle up, and enjoy the ride, bitches!